Well, greetings, everyone, and praise the Lord in Jesus' name. It is your pastor again. Uh, just delighted to share with you uh, as we continue uh, doing uh, our devotionals, especially uh, uh, these 40 days we have committed ourselves uh, that's called Lent. As we try to focus in again on Jesus as he moved forward in his mission toward Calvary, and we're focusing really on in on living life in the spirit uh, as the corporate journey. And in particular, we're looking at, again, the nature, uh, the scope, uh, the dynamics uh, of our uh, corporate mission. As I've said to you many times before, we're, we're using Jesus really as our major model and focus. And we're trying our best to ask the Lord to help us to uh, put ourselves in his place to actually see what he saw, to know to some degree what he knew. And at the same time, how did he do this and yet move with focus, with authority, uh, with commitment, with a great deal of expectation uh, toward his final mission? And of course, that was his death on the cross uh, at Calvary uh, and his resurrection from the dead to secure our salvation. And so we've chosen again, first of all, the two foundational scriptures, Matthew 6 and 10, and then Matthew 6, uh, 31 to 33. Each of them helps us to, to give real focus on the kingdom of God. Again, he taught us how to pray in Matthew 6, and he prayed, he told us, pray this way, thy kingdom come, thy will be done where on earth, I believe it means in us and through us, uh, just like it's being done in heaven. And then verses 31 33, stop being anxious about what you will eat, what you shall drink, what you shall wear, what you shall wear, rather. Um, he says, for even, for these are the things that the Gentiles, those who don't know God, these are the things that they focus on, they seek after, they're very anxious about it. He says, your heavenly father knows you have need of these things, I'm talking to you and I who know him, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things uh, shall be added unto you. We've added in addition uh, a number of scriptures this week that will help us to encompass again uh, the scope of the mission that Jesus had and our own, uh, and, and then the nature and dynamic of trying to successfully fulfill the mission God has called each of us to and all of us to in a corporate way. And so we've looked at again Hebrews chapter 12, seeing therefore we are compassed about, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, those who've gone before us in the Christian faith, the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight, every, everything that holds you back, and every sin, he calls it easily besetting sin, those things that seem to entangle us all the time uh, as children of God, uh, and run this race uh, before us with patience. That word means to run it in the midst of challenge, in the midst of struggle, but yet to run it with a great deal of confidence and joy says about Jesus being our example, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame. We also added very two familiar scriptures that we will deal with this week. Uh, the first one again, uh, Romans uh, chapter 12. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, totally acceptable unto God. And as he says, it's on your reasonable service. And don't be conformed or shaped to this world, but rather be you transformed, a radical metamorphosis. Let your mind be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind, and you will prove or demonstrate or manifest what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then this week, we'll look at also the very dramatic scripture in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit it's come upon you. And here's the important part we're going to be talking about this section. And you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so again, we're trying to focus on the, the mission of Jesus, but in particular, our mission uh, to continue what he was doing and to do it in a corporate manner. So again, here's the first part, looking at really uh, the nature uh, and scope of our mission. And what the Lord says here uh, is very powerful uh, as he looks towards Calvary. I'm going to look at um, a number of things. What is the nature of this mission that we're called to? 
when we look at the scope of the mission, the geographic or the territorial calling that you and I have and who you ought to reach. Number three, I'm gonna look at, I think that this is gonna require us to understand the issue of sacrifice and to look at and see Jesus in our daily lives and be more aware of his presence and of his person. This is gonna galvanize us to be able to be successful uh, on our corporate mission. Let's talk about what a mission really is. Again, a mission is an assignment. A mission is a task that's been assigned to us, allocated to us, given to us to accomplish. Uh, in a spiritual way, a, a mission is an important goal or purpose or a task that has been given to us, assigned to us, and that the Lord asks us to complete. This mission, and a real mission, is always accompanied by a sense of commitment. You can't really embrace a mission if you're not committed, or you'll never achieve it. I want you to have a, a mind of commitment. We must have this as a sense of a calling, that we're called by the Lord to carry this out, a true mission. This mission, as I said in our teaching, requires, it requires the mindset of Jesus. What was his mind? He was focused on what he had to do. That means we must have a mind of commitment. But also, we must have a mind of something that we don't often deal with in this day and age in the church. That is, it must be a mind or this vision requires sacrifice. What do we mean by that? Jesus, somebody said, paid it all. Well, he paid it all for our redemption. But the working out of this mission that we've been assigned to, it requires sacrifice. What is sacrifice? Sacrifice means to yield up to surrender, to give up something that is important to you in order to enable or enhance something more important. So a sacrifice means giving something up. It means that you don't have to be in debt to somebody, but you care about them, you value them, or you value God. And because of that, you're willing to give up some things that belong to you, things that are important to you, but those things require you give them up in order to achieve a higher goal. Christ did it for you and I. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He gave, he laid down his life, deeming you and I to be valuable, to be important. And he loved us so much that he was willing to be sacrificial. Must we, must we also be sacrificial? on some real level, whether it's of our time, of our talent, of our giving, our treasure. But again, that this corporate journey that you and I are on, that we walk together with Christ, we must be ready to be sacrificial and to do it with joy and with humility. Again, not only that, but we're gonna get into the scope of this mission. Remember that the Lord talks about that when he says, but ye shall receive power, supernatural power. When? After the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And why this power? So that you will be my witnesses. You're going to get into that real deeply. You shall be my witnesses. But notice the scope of the mission. It's not just simply to occupy until he comes. It's not just to have church. What, what is it? He wants you and I to be his witness. We're gonna talk about in our next segment what it means to be a witness. And he says, we must be witnesses. And, he, and the Lord says it in his own words through Luke in Acts chapter one, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. That is a huge scope that we must be his witnesses at home, in our neighborhood, in the in the areas where we live, or we work, or we do business, and far beyond that, the uttermost parts of the earth. So again, we're going to be on this journey, this corporate journey, this mission, but we must understand again from the eyes, the heart, the mind of Jesus as our perfect example, what is the nature and the scope? What is really the dynamics that must push us to complete this mission? Hey, I'm so glad you've joined us with this. 
And again, as I say always, I trust that you'll encourage others in your family, your friends, even your coworkers to join you in this devotional journey, especially during the Lenten season, as we fast and pray, as we seek the Lord. Look, I know you'll be better for it, and those around you will be better strengthened and enhanced in the things concerning the kingdoms of, kingdom of God. So again, God bless you. Pray for us as we pray for you, so we do it together in Jesus' name. God bless you.